So that uh, box representation you are seeing in k dimension correspond to k interval graphs, right. You are not losing any information because when you can recreate once the k inter interval graphs are given you can recreate such that their intersection happens to be the edge set of uh, one graph. You can in fact uh, draw that graph in k dimension as box if and only if. It is possible that some of you are a bit confused about whether it is all working out. The people who are more rigorous will be feeling a little uncomfortable about uh, this projection and all. But that is a matter of just working out, think a care little carefully and then you will understand it. So as of now the take home is only that uh, this geometric question has a uh, somewhat like more or less combinatorial uh, interpretation namely the equivalent formulation uh, namely that the minimum dimension in which a given graph can have a box representation axis parallel box representation is uh, exactly equal to the minimum k such that there exists k interval graphs uh, on the same set of vertices such that the intersection of the edge sets happens to be the original edge set right. Now that is all you have to look right. So in terms of interval graphs you can argue now for this thing. Now let me argue that it is not possible to have for this Roberts graph uh, n minus 1 intervals such that the intersection of the edge sets is the edge set of this thing right. Uh, the why is it so because the reason is only this thing. So suppose these are the missing edges, the all other edges are present. Now it is clear that if I take one of the inter say whatever interval graph I am getting in the first axis right, can I have both these edges missing there that is the question together simultaneously missing there. Suppose you take one interval graph because no it is not possible because you recall this graph has all these other edges present right because these all these other four edges are present. So the interval graph has to be a super graph of this uh, because the present edges should be present there also. Suppose these two edges are absent what do you see there on this four vertices? It is a C4 right induce C4 and definitely we know that interval graphs are caudal graphs and C4 cannot be there. So therefore one of these absent edges can be absent. Uh, in one interval graph. So not the two of them can be absent in one. That means how many interval graphs are required? Yeah, for each one we need a separate one, right. So if there are two n vertices then n missing edges, n absent edges. So then n things are required, n interval graphs are required. So dimension should be uh, at least n, right. So in other words if you want to formulate it in terms of pigeonhole principle you just say that suppose it was n minus 1 dimension then there exists n minus 1 uh, interval graph such that the intersection of the edge sets is uh, the same as this thing. But then uh, there are this n absent edges so n minus 1 interval graphs each of the absent edges should be absent in at least one of them but then that means by pigeonhole principle that the pigeons are these missing edges here, holes are those interval graphs, two pigeons should be in one hole. So two absent edges should go to the same hole. So which means that on the four vertices forming the end points of that we should have a C4 like this. It is a contradiction. So therefore we can always have uh, there exists interval graphs of uh, yeah there exists graphs whose boxicity the minimum dimension in which you can get a box representation is at least yeah number of vertices by 2 right. So here 2 n vertices and n number of vertices you can put floor or something like that. So there exists one. Now I will also show that that is the tight one because uh, you can always given any graph you can uh, get an interval representation say a box representation in that many dimensions. Uh, before that let us see a very easy way of doing it with uh, in n dimension because this is one question which uh, 
usually mathematicians ask when we talk about a new parameter boxicity is it well defined what means given a graph uh, yeah can you say talk uh, you can talk about it this is the dimension but is it inf infinite infinity or something like that right is it finite right is it finite so then yes it is it is always because for a finite uh, finite graph you can have because so it is possible that you cannot even have a box representation then there is no point in asking that uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, minimum dimension in which you can represent it right. So this is very easy to see what you do is you take each vertex corresponding to each vertex you introduce a uh, interval graph and you will put you will have an axis for a vertex somehow so what do you do. So you, suppose you v is the vertex so you put an interval for that v first this is v and all the vertices which are supposed to touch it that means supposed to be neighbors of it in the graph given graph. So this is n of v we can put it like this and all the vertices which are not neighbors of it non neighbors of it. So this is v minus v union n of n of v. right this can be collected here right you can use the same interval for all of them. Now do it for each vertex separately and put it on different different axes. Now you construct the box representation from this by taking the Cartesian product right each vertex will get a box. Now I claim that this is a correct box representation for your given graph why is it so this is because the each interval graph I have created is a super graph of the original one because every edge which is present is still present here because uh, you see v and this thing all uh, neighbors the c these edges from v are present here and uh, others are all forming a clique here because the outside vertices whether it touching b or not so they are all uh, going through this point and therefore they are forming a clique therefore there is no issue about uh, any edge missing on that part and uh, with v whatever edge is to be there it is there whatever edge should not be there it is not there. So therefore all edges are present all edges present in the graph are present in this interval graphs I created. Now uh, if a particular edge is absent say that a, a absent edge may be in uh, like from v, v to u. So when, when you created the uh, axis for v so you know that you have separated it out now you, you have kept it in the third layer right v and then its neighbors non neighbors are far so that they are separating right. So therefore uh, this will work out so it is a uh, picture uh, when you draw the full picture it may not be very clear to you but then when you argue like this it should be very clear right. So actually um, let me see how much time 46 okay now what I try to do is I will uh, skip the n by 2 I will uh, try to do a proof that uh, uh, if the maximum degree of a graph is uh, delta right then we can uh, have a box representation in a space of dimension delta square sorry 2 delta square this is what I will do okay quickly um, right the, it will only depend on the maximum degree it says that uh, the, the even if the graph is very big but if you all your degrees are small you can actually manage to uh, have a box representation in small dimension right. So the for instance for k regular graphs only a k square dimension is required in fact you can make it even smaller it is finally order of uh, k log k into something this what. So actually log square k was uh, only known till uh, recently but now in the last uh, month or so there was a paper which was which came uh, by removing another log with little extra right so but uh, that is a bit more complicated but uh, this is quite easy to understand right how do you 
this is again you will see that though the problem is quite geometric i mean you don't have to think too much about geometry here mostly we work with this interval graph model and uh, uh, that uh, looks completely combinatorial right it's a, it's a combinatorial thing so therefore it's, it will be very clear the maybe the geometry is somewhat captured in the geometry inherent in the interval graphs right little bit intervals and all but uh, otherwise it simply disappears so though it is uh, when is box representation that's quite interesting that the problem looks geometric but uh, it's a combinatorial question so now how do i do this thing so a graph is given g right so instead of showing that 2 delta square is an upper bound what i'm going to do is that uh, 2 into chromatic number of g square g square is an upper bound is what i'm going to do what is g square uh, you can see that if i do this thing uh, this will come because uh, can you tell what is chromatic number of g square in terms of the maximum degree of g so when you uh, take the square of the graph how does the maximum degree increase because a vertex is like this oh, okay so what do you mean by square square means yeah suppose this is there so you have you need to add this edge that's what it means right so take the graph and keep the everything in the graph as such but then you add a few more edges which are uh, those uh, edges between uh, pairs of vertices which were at a distance of 2 in the original graph right all those edges right that is like squaring that is the square so a lot more edges will be added now for instance if I square this uh, then I will add this edge I will add this edge I will add this edge like that right so that is squaring so now the first question is if I square a graph how will the maximum degree go up how much will be the maximum degree in the new graph suppose this is our text this is delta neighbors delta neighbors here so it is quite possible that these are all delta minus one of them they are all different right suppose in the worst case then how many so when this k will be connected to how many new things so for instance this will be connected to this 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 right all of them so this 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 like that so connected to how many neighbors will be there then total so it should be delta into delta minus 1 right plus original delta that many neighbors will be delta square minus delta plus delta is equal to delta square so that plus delta comes from this original neighbors right so total delta square neighbors can be there total delta square uh, is neighbors that means the maximum degree can go up to delta square when you square the graph so now uh, do you know that uh, do you know in terms of the maximum degree you can get a upper bound for the chromatic number right chi of g square is ah, but here g squares delta is delta square now so we can put delta square plus 1 the square plus 1 right but uh, you can do a bit of improvement on this thing because uh, there is something called a Brooks theorem. Brooks theorem, which will allow you to get rid of this one for except for couple of special cases. Like uh, there is one, oh, there are only two cases where when for connected graph there are only two cases where delta plus one maximum degree plus one colors are required. One is complete graph, right? because n minus 1 is the degree and then colors are required and the other is odd cycles namely the odd cycles degree is 2 but uh, we need 3 colors 
those are only two cases otherwise you need only delta so you just can take care of this and that will become this thing and because i am going to prove that boxicity is at most two times chi of g square this will be uh, two times delta square this is what i am going to do right and uh, now what do i do i square the graph right given the graph g i square it first step is square it once i square it then i color it with chi of sorry, chi of g square colors color this is the sec uh, next step once you color it you get color classes of g square right each color class is a vertex set only now you can take that color now g square is not required you can take that color classes and then come to g and identify those color classes like this say in g all the edges uh, here are in g only this is g only but the color classes of g square right so, you know uh, you do you agree with me that uh, a color class of g square will be a color class of g also should be right because a color class of g square is an independent set there and uh, in g it should be a color class because in g if there was an edge there that will be in g square also right so this is just that in g i could have got uh, a smaller chromatic numbers some bigger color classes could have existed uh, but uh, now in g square because extra edges are added and that may not be color class but whatever is a color class in g square is a color class in g also right now what i am going to do is corresponding to each color class of g let's call it c1 c2 c3 c g square c chi of g square so maybe ch or something like that we can call i will uh, introduce a new graph my intention is to introduce a new graph corresponding to each of the color class so this is the way for c1 how will i do so suppose this is c1 this so vertices of c1 will be here now i collect all the other classes here c2 c3 c4 and ck so ch all of them and then what i do is i put i make it a complete graph that means if at all some edges are missing there i'll add them so some between the color classes so within the color class there was no edges but i put fill all of them and then put all missing edges and make this a complete graph and then here between this and this there were some edges in g remember not in g square in g those edges are kept as such and this is an independent set you know right yes it is so let us call this graph h1 right now how many such graphs are created for c1 you created one like this and similarly for c2 you can do the same thing but here now c1 c3 ck will be there and this will be complete graph and these edges will be as in g as in g and this will be an independent set this will be h2 right like that how many graphs will be created h1 h2 Ah, h h or h equal to chi of g square right so many class will now my claim is that my original graph g is equal to the intersection of these graphs so equal to 1 to h if i intersection means it's on the same set of vertices so intersection means uh, intersection of the edge sets if i take the intersection of the edge sets of all these graphs i will get back g do you agree with me first uh, see it's very easy to see whether it's intersection or not what you have to only check two conditions one is whether the claimed uh, these graphs are super graphs of the original graph all the edges of the original graphs are present there or not yes it is present because we only added edges there right to create edge size so therefore they are super graphs and now the crucial thing to verify is if a particular edge was absent in the original graph it should be absent in one of these things at least one of these things 
so that when you take the intersection that edge disappears right because in the intersection only things which are there everywhere will come right so if a particular edge is missing in any of these things when you take the intersection that will disappear so uh, we have to make sure that if all, all uh, true that all of these things are super graphs of the original graph but we have to also make sure that if a particular any edge is absent in the original graph a uv is absent in the original graph so uv is not there in the edge set of g then we have to show that there exists an i such that uh, uv uv is not an edge of e of hi also right there exists one of this graph there is it true now you look at uh, where u and v are there together suppose if both of them together appear in uh, one of the color classes of g square then we are done right because anyway when i construct the graph corresponding to that color class then anyway in that color class i have in field any edge that was independent setting the only issue is when this edge u and v was across two color class u was in some ci and uh, v was in cj now you can take any one of those there are two possibilities now we can consider the graph corresponding to that color class ci or the graph corresponding to the color class cj any one will work for us so take the graph corresponding to the ci u is identified here and the remaining things are here so click and somewhere here we have your cj and your v is here right and this was missing edge so now in this graph will we have this edge no because the connection between this and this was as in g right and we haven't added anything across right it was something some edges are there but those edges were there if they were there in g but now i know that between u and v there was no edge in g so therefore uh, i will not have this edge here also right so that uv edge which is missing is missing here right so my claim is that if an edge uv is absent in one of those hi's then it will be absent sorry one of uh, sorry in g it will be absent in one of the hi's and then you take the intersections that it will anyway disappear so therefore what you get back then is the edges which are present in g namely g right therefore intersection of hi's will be equal to g this is what we get so does it mean that box city c equal to 1 to h here the, the, does it mean that box city of uh, uh, g is equal to h just because you showed that intersection of this thing is h not necessarily because hi's are not interval graphs because we if if each hi was an interval graph then we are done right if each hi was an interval graph then it was done but not it's not true because this is actually a split graph uh, if you not right last uh, yesterday i introduced the split graph so this is a clique and uh, uh, there are these edges between them this is an independent set one side we have an independent set the other side there is a clique the edges are going across this is a split graph not uh, an interval split graph is a caudal graph but not an interval graph we are still not uh, there with the interval graphs so then how will i manage i can manage with two now two factor now that means for each of these hi's i can get two intervals suppose given an hi i will be able to find two interval graphs i i1 and i i2 such that their intersection equal to this hi that means these are box city 2 graphs each hi is a box city 2 graph that's what i will prove they though they are not interval graph they are box city 2 graphs when i take the uh, then i will be able to find out uh, i will be able to find out two interval graphs such that they intersect which will finally prove that 2 into h is equal to 2 into chi of g square is the box of city of the graph because if i take this thing intersection of all these things together right so i i1 plus i i2 plus right into oh, so every uh, those two h inter intersection of two h interval graphs will form the original graph so how do i do that so now look at the picture of the graph once again so the 
there are some edges here some some edges here not so thick maybe so i can uh, number this as 1 2 3 some t right these are remaining things 1 2 3 to n dash n dash being n minus t right now though it will look like how is it possible i am not going to claim that all split graphs are uh boxicity two graphs or something it is not true also in fact there are some split graphs which have very high boxicity but this particular split graph is like that so from one look it is not visible but in the second look we will see that there is some structure there what is the structure for instance if i look at this graph and then i take a vertex from this part any vertex from this part say so any vertex from this part so is it possible to have more than one edge from this vertex into this set that's the question more than one vertex for instance if this is u can i find x here can i find y here such that uh, u is connected to x also y also maybe more things eh? so at least two can i can you find that that's the question there is a reason why you cannot find so given any vertex on the clique side uh, it cannot have more than one neighbor in the independent set side there is one simple reason why uh, this is true that is the only crucial crucial observation here what is that can anybody guess it because we have to uh, recall the way in which we came you know we know how did we make this color classes we went to g square and made the color classes there should be some reason for that not till now i have been used it right what was the reason for going to the square of the graph and make the color classes yes yes then you have this edge right because in uh, the, because this edge and this edge is there in g so then or x and y were at a distance of 2 in g right then this edge should have come so then but then this would not have become a color class in g right so the same color means as x and y were not having an edge in g square means so two edges cannot be there like this because x between x and y this path would have existed in g itself so this edge this edge would have come right so that is the reason right that was uh, like uh, with a, a good planning uh, we had taken that uh, uh, g square and took took its color classes seeing seeing uh, foreseeing this situation right so that otherwise there was no reason to go to the g square you could have taken some color class and started working no, it will not work that way. so therefore so what happens is uh, okay in this case so this is the clique and uh, uh, so here each vertex here can have only one neighbor here like this only one neighbor. from here you can see many probably that is not prevent blocked this is possible yeah, this is quite possible but not the other way from looking from here you will see only one looking from the clique side you will see only one neighbor in the independent set from the independent set side you may see many in the clique right so it can be several stars like this now this helps us to prove that the boxicity of this graph namely an hi is 2 is 2 or at most 2 why because we can i can construct two interval graph now such that the intersection of this thing is this thing what i do is for that color class so that means the vertices here so let me call it 1 2 3 up to t then i'll put small intervals in that order say 1 2 3 t 1 2 3 4 5 6 so t like this right and then this is before this i can start somewhere here everything else every other thing on the clique side i can start interval can start somewhere here so that they form a clique everything starts here therefore they will be intersecting here and they will be forming a clique 
and up to where should I take it to? So, of course, that is dictated by the neighborhood, right? So, because you know each vertex here, suppose I take an x vertex here, it will see one neighbor here, say 4 is a neighbor of x, only one neighbor. So, you have to go there and touch it, it has to go there and touch it, no need to go beyond that, but it has to go all the way to touch it and for everything. So, you have a y here, so you may be going up to 2 and take it. you have a z here, it may be going and touching say its neighbor say some i or something like that. So, exactly to where it should go because there is one single neighbor which is seeing in that 1 to t, right, you will go and touch it. Now, what it has done is uh, each x is uh, seeing not only its neighbor, but also all the neighbors which are numbered below all the uh, vertices of that independent set which are numbered smaller than that right 1 to 2 1 2 3 up to its neighbors number right that is what is happening that is not what we want we want only that tell me what should I do now because I, I am going to make another interval graph. So, I, you understood my situation right. So, I want each vertex from here the clique side should see exactly its neighbor, one neighbor only is there from the independent set. So, the idea was to put the independent set vertices like this and the clique vertices will come from one side and uh, catch its neighbor, but then when you catch it from this side what happened is it caught more than what it can uh, because anyway it has to go through right. So, whatever was in between was caught and definitely we want to somehow get rid of them. The, the thing is now this time you should start from the other side, now here we started from this side, now this time I should start from this side and come and catch whatever I should catch. Now this portion I was getting unnecessarily earlier, now that is left out and I will get this portion unnecessarily, but then that was not there in the earlier right, okay, more clearly suppose this was my t things and something is coming and this was my aim it was my, so I caught these guys unwanted last time, but now the next time I am coming from here and catching the same thing. So, I am catching this unnecessarily, but these are all released now right, this is released. So, but in the earlier one this was not there. So, together they are only seeing uh, in the intersection they are only seeing this one guy right. So, that is, so look from here and look from there. So, you got rid of all the unwanted things, right? You got only this. So, therefore, this two interval graphs, this will happen simultaneously for every vertex is doing its work, right? In uh, two chances, he gets, he, he comes and catches from this side and this side. So, all the unwanted things will be uh, removed. It is like a small puzzle which you can ask people, right? So, so therefore, we get uh, in two interval graphs, we get uh, so. Uh, so, that means you can find uh, i i 1 intersection i i 2 is equal to h i right. So, finally, what we get is g is equal to h 1 intersection h 2 intersection say this one i of g square and here this is equal to i 1 1 intersection i 1 2 intersection i 2 1 intersection i 2 2 intersection. So, this is we have which means boxicity of g is less than equal to right 2 times chi of g square ok. And from this thing we got with the little help from Brooks theorem we will get 2 into delta square right chi of g square because g square is maximum degree is delta square we could have got 2 into delta square plus 2 very easily because delta square plus 1 was an obvious upper bound for chromatic number, but with a little help from Brooks theorem we get uh, rid of that extra 2 and then you get 2, de two delta square right. This is the uh, complete proof of that. So, it is 3 13 15 I think it is my correct time. So, there are many things about uh, these things I just wanted to give you an introduction of this stuff. So, I do not know whether it was uh, I, I got I hope you understood what we told a simple thing a little cleverness that is all here and there 
right but uh, the uh, the uh, many uh, there are many quest- uh, the the things is the nature of most of the proofs will be like this a little trick that is what we will need in most of these things uh, uh, though it, the, ge- the geometry is usually a little clumsy to work with luckily here we don't have uh, geometry uh, the uh, geometry is in the results uh, proofs are mostly combinatorial final the result will be geometric you can always see a geometric uh, interpretation of that result which is quite intersection graph of boxes in some dimension but all the proofs will come in combinatorial things though we don't have the f- feel of how the geometric uh, thing it's uh, in proof step by step how the geometry is moving but the analysis is very easy it's very pleasant combinatorics that is the thing so therefore that's a mix of combinatorics and geometry in results geometry but proof combinatorics